Okay, we are ready to introduce our next assignment, which is our first uh, fully original vector assignment, where we're not just trying to recreate an emoji that we found somewhere else or were able to make. We are trying to come up with our own original image. And we're going to make it out of vector shape. And we're going to make it in both black and white and color. So this will include thumbnail sketching. It will include uh, using a vector graphics program, either Adobe Illustrator, if you have it, or our browser-based version, which is called VECTR dot com so vector dot com and then to meet all the requirements you will post your sketch you will post a black version of the finished logo what I call a black shape version so here's the sketch here's the black shape version and here's a full color version, all done with vector shapes, except your sketch can be hand drawn and photographed, or your sketch can be digitally sketched in a raster program. However, whatever works for you. So here is another past student example. Sketch, black shape vector, color vector. Now, in terms of, this is our, our first kind of creation of a fully original image that's not composited from other things. We're gonna be making our own imagery, but we're gonna branch into that kind of slowly. So the inspiration for the assignment is based on all the different logos and branding identities that are out there. And so what can be fun is to start with a pre-existing logo and then to treat yours as a mashup or a combination of things that are already out there, right? So this student was looking at kind of angry faces and the, the graphics that are out there for them. And then this chemical model for water because we were doing a theme of angry elementals that semester to support, support an Earth Day show. And so came up with their original idea through sketching and then kind of refined it and simplified it a little bit because the flames were getting a little bit too, too much like an illustration and don't read as cleanly as a logo. And came up with that solution, right? Which combines letter forms with of the H's with the, the pictorial logo. So sometimes logos use letter forms. Those are usually called logo types, right? Or word marks. There's different names for, for logos that are, are letters. Um, logos that we're going to be looking at are mostly what are called pictorial logos or iconic logos, where all they need is an image. They don't need a word or letters to help set them apart. And then we're gonna be looking at these different strategies to logo design, right? And you can think of a logo as a graphic symbol that needs to be versatile and scalable. So I have a little uh, set of slides you can look at that we'll refer to that breaks them down. This is one of those slides. So basically logos, whether they're black and white or color, tend to be composed either centrally and symmetrically. So you see how these are all balanced off of the center. Target's logo is, is perfect symmetry in all directions, right? The shell logo is what's called bisymmetry. It's like a mirror image side to side, but it's, it's perfectly bisymmetrical. The NBC Peacock logo still is central and symmetrical, but it's not perfect by symmetry, right? It's just by symmetrically balanced. So that the eye still goes to the middle, but you see there's a little beak on one side and not on the other. And the colors obviously don't match side to side. 
But the brilliance of that is that in black and white, this still works as a very strong graphic logo that's symmetrical with the only deviation being that beak, which calls attention to it being a peacock, right? This is bilaterally symmetrical. This is bilaterally symmetrical. This is almost perfectly symmetrical, like the target. So what's the advantage of that? Well, it's, it's, like, a, uh, it's like a target. The viewer's eyes goes right to the center and then leaves it. So it's almost impossible for the viewer not to see what you're trying to show them because everything is based on the center. And then often things radiate out from that center in equal measure. What's the problem with central symmetrical? Is it can be rather boring. You know, it's just like a button. So you look at it and then you look away. You look at it, then you look away. It doesn't carry your eye movement through it. Instead, your eye just lands on it and then leaves. Even if you add a lot of subtlety, like the gradations here, or all of the different shapes going on here, it still just kind of hits it and then leaves. So if your logo is more about engaging the eye and the eye movement, then you might want to go for a more dynamic approach, which avoids central symmetrical. And so some of the most dynamic logos, you know, Nike's swoosh is a, a classic example of trying to move the eye through at speed. This was a, a logo for the Rio de, de Janeiro Olympics. And it does a good job of kind of moving the eye around it instead of just being a landing pad. And then there's more subtle dynamic logos like the Rolling Stones, just by tilting the, the tongue and mouth to, this, to a three quarter view instead of fully frontal, it slows our eye movement down a little bit and we take it in differently than we would if it was just facing us from the front. The crocodile the same way, showing us something in silhouette, can slow down our eye movement of it and maybe make it a little bit more dynamic. Same thing with the Twitter, the Twitter bird. And so basically your logo is going to be central and symmetrical or it's going to be dynamic, right? But beyond that, there's additional games you can play, which is a play with positive and negative space, especially because we're gonna be designing our logo to be black and white. Um, mostly it's going to be black cutout shapes. So when you put that on a white background, the white can create positive shapes as well, like the S being created by the, the U shape and the A shape, or the, the rhinoceros and the giraffe being created by the positive shape of the elephant or the faces also becoming the wings of the, the eagle, right? Or the key also showcasing the skyline of a building, which does a nice scale play as well as positive and negative space. But why do I include this panda from the, the World Wildlife Federation or Foundation? It's because even this plays with positive and negative space in a really clever way because we never see the top of the panda's head being closed. Instead, our eye makes that up. So positive and negative shapes are a really big asset to logo design as well. And simplicity is a big asset. So if we look at my slides, I start with just an introduction with this uh, past student created video about how vectors are different than, than bit, bitmap or raster images, pixel-based images. So remember that vectors are perfectly clean at any scale, whereas raster, bitmap, pixel-based images, that all means the same thing. As you scale them up, you're going to see more and more of their resolution. So if we build something as a vector, it's shape-based and everything's perfectly clean. But if we draw the same thing in a raster program like PhotoP or Photoshop, we start to see the little stair steps pretty quickly, as, especially as we scale it up. So this is what is a raster image. It's made up of square pixels. 
You can make them out of a lot of pixels or very few pixels. But because they're limited to their pixels, they're not going to be as clean as vector images, which are based on shapes. And those shapes can hold a perfect curve. And then you can build up on that and you can color behind. And you can even add gradations to vectors. We're going to be learning all of that. But you have to build them differently, right? So vector outlines can even be turned off. And so that what looks like a fully rendered 3D painting is still a vector. It's not pixel based anymore. So just like we'll see later with raster imaging and all of our digital coloring and digital painting options, with vectors, you can add layers of color, whether they're, they're hard edged or whether they're soft edged. Okay. So now let's get into some logos. If the graphic symbol is an image without any words or any letter forms, it is called a pictorial logo, sometimes called iconic logos, right? And they do not rely on any text to be instantly understood. Starbucks used to have text around its iconic logo, but it, it then got rid of it. Nike used to have text underneath its swoosh, then it got rid of it. Because once it becomes recognizable enough, you don't need it anymore. Logo types are word mark logos. So they're called word marks or they're called logo types, where the entire image is letter forms, right? But just because they're made of letters, it doesn't mean they're simple. They're still highly customized imagery. You know, whether it's Subway, whether it's Google, whether it's HBO, USA, right? All of these are using the same tools that it takes to make a, a picture and trying to get those qualities into the lettering. So the other reason we study uh, vectors, vector imaging in this class, is for type design, because you design type as a vector. And we're going to be doing that with a later assignment. So combined logos will use both, right? So Adidas still uses its pictorial logo along with a logo type, and it combines them together. Target sometimes does that, sometimes doesn't. NBC sometimes does that. Uh, Nike used to, but doesn't anymore. So, and you can see like the development of Starbucks. I'm going to encourage you for this project, when we're just getting used to vectors for the first time, to not worry about text at all because text is hard to get right so instead i'd like you to focus your designs on a single pictorial logo but no matter what type of logo you're designing the qualities you want it to have is that it's clear it's engaging and that it's versatile so that usually boils down to simplicity exciting simplicity right and so we've talked about central symmetrical versus dynamic versus a play with positive and negative space. These are ways you can make your, your image more engaging based on, on what you're trying to show with it. So because you're building with a vector tool, we're going to be using the pin tool. And simplicity is hard enough, but using the pin tool is very different than just drawing. And so it's going to seem like a harder than usual method of making an image, but it will give us that versatility and that cleanliness that we want from a finished simple logo. So it's good to sketch with simplicity in mind. And we're going to we're going to get introduced to all this stuff because this is how you draw shapes, customized shapes, not ready-made shapes in a vector program like Adobe Illustrator or like vector.com. But once you've drawn the shapes, 
we can layer 